Hey everybody, this is Adam Broughton of Liberationist Republic High coming to you from the Voluntary Virtues Network. I've got a special guest today. You already know him and love him or hate him. He hate, we just had him actually on Robert's show not too long ago, The Anarchist Experience. Uh, this brave young gentleman decided to debate Robert, who is arguably the most intelligent person we have on the network, uh, the most eloquent. Uh, but uh, this young man, Jake Tompkins, held his own and you know actually had a civil debate, which... You know, not to characterize, you know, all anarchists in general, but we tend to be assholes. <laughs> we tend to get ourselves into a debate style where we're literally just throwing hate at each other and mischaracterizing each other. You know, I've been guilty of it. In fact, I hate to say it, I've got a video on my channel that I recorded with a good friend of mine. Uh, he did uh, what he called a debunking of anarcho-communism in two minutes or less. Uh, and I posted the video. I'm not going to take it down because of how many views and stuff it's bringing to the channel, but... Uh, I am by no means proud of it, so that's uh, now it's just used for you know rating purposes. So I want to publicly apologize for that. Uh, there was no need for the bullshit that was spewed on that. Uh, not that I'm saying that the communist part of the anarcho-communism is necessarily correct in my opinion, but that's mm. a debate for another day. Actually, the debate already happened. No need to have it. Uh, so, anyways, Jake Tompkins, introduce yourself. What are you a part of? How did you get to where you are? Tell your story. Go. All right. So uh, my name is Jake, as you all know. Um, as I think Robert said, I run a YouTube channel called Red and Black Revolutionary, and I'm part of a bunch of anarchist Facebook groups. I admin those, um, and I'm part of a few, I guess you could call them revolutionary organizations, such as Workers Youth United and things like that. Um, and I typically spend most of my time, you know, uh, floating around internet debate forums and, you know, learning as much as I can. Um, I guess where I got, how I got to where I, where I am today, I probably wouldn't be where I am today if I didn't go through a rebellious stage within um, 13 to 14. Uh, you know, I got into what was, like, the new atheist movement at the time and uh, kind of, you know, started watching people like the Amazing Atheist and things like that. And I started to become disenfranchised with that community and more into, like, like anarchist activism and political stuff like that. And I, I haven't always been an anarchist, but for a long time I've been, and uh, on and off as well. So, um, you know, the, that's, I guess, my story. <laughs> well, and who's some of your major influences that kind of pushed you more towards the ANCOM side? Because uh, it seems to me that and I could be just completely jaded and naive, you know, seeing from the ANCAP perspective. Uh, but I right. took the ran from being a neocon to, uh, you know, through Ron Paul, Ludwig von Mises, right. Rothbard, and so on. That got me to the ANCAP stage. Uh, but what were you reading? What were you watching that got you to go ANCOM? Right. Well, I I originally I kind of when I like. In my in that rebellious stage, I kind of came to the conclusion that I didn't like like governments as structures, and I was talking to my one of my teachers about it, and he said, "Oh well, then you're an anarchist," and I said, "Oh, oh well, I am. I don't think I am because I didn't classify myself as such, and in fact, I looked down on such people because I was like this pseudo intellectual thirteen year old." Um, <clears throat> but uh, so I actually looked into it, and I looked in the dictionary definition, which I don't really find satisfactory today now that I know more about it. But like, so the dictionary definition was just. All right, so you don't like government, and I was like, oh, I guess that's me, and so I started leaving myself an anarchist for a while, and um, what actually ended up happening was I started getting into conversations with ANCAP, and I found myself not jiving with anarcho-capitalist philosophy so much. I, I found myself, you know, kind of not liking the free market capitalism part of it, and so I, I, I kind of, you know, looked into alternatives, and what I found was anarchist communism. It didn't make sense to me for a while, but then I actually started looking into it. I started watching people like Anarcho-Pack on YouTube, the Left Libertarian. I started, um, you know, kind of looking into the literature and stuff like that, and I learned more about it, and then I became an anarchist communist, and then I and then I had a small break for it with a lot for a while where I was a couple different ideologies and then I came back to anarchism once again because it started making sense again and um, now I am where I am I guess <laughs> right, so uh, just to make sure we've got definitions clear uh, as far as I understand it and correct me if I'm wrong and I know you will if I'm wrong uh, anarcho-communism can be most accurately described as uh, a stateless society uh, wherein uh, the Factors of productions are owned by all, as opposed to, you know, one person or, or a group of people. Is that fair to say, or is there a better definition for that? 
Um, well, I, I, that's, that's definitely part of it, but I would say that it's a bit more complicated. So anarchist communism, again, as everybody knows, would synthesize anarchism and communism. Communism being a stateless, classless, and moneyless social order, where the means of production, like you said, are owned collectively. That's to say that they're owned by the people who use them, right? So uh, it could be one person that owns like the, a factory by themselves, or it could be a bunch of people that work in a, I guess, a worker co-op or something. Um, and what and this distribution system in a communist society would be from each according to their ability to according to their need. Um, so instead of there being markets, there would be, you know, a basically allocation of resources according to people's needs for them. Right? So that's how that would work. And that's the communism part. The anarchism part right. is basically um, the synthesis of that with um, anarchist principles. So basically um, the rejection of God, the state. I mean, this is my definition. It's going to differ from yours, obviously. The rejection of yeah. God, the state, capitalism, uh, um, and the acceptance of consensus, things, things like consensus, democracy, uh, free association, um, you know, uh, uh, the rejection of organized religion and um, you know things of that nature. That's that's a that's part of it, but it's not the whole anarchist, I guess, ethic. But you know, it's it's a complicated thing in my opinion. But so right. that's well, basically. And that's I a, guess the one question I'm going to have for you: you mentioned free association and how that's something that uh, at least you personally, as far as an ANCOM, are are against. Would you kind of flesh that out just a little bit more so I can kind of understand that we're not going to go and debate it, but just so I can kind of understand what you mean and we can maybe discuss it another time. Well, anarchists and, advocate free association in the sense that people should be able to determine what relationships they enter into. So that's been the historical line of that, um, and I support that as my okay. personal philosophy, obviously, since I'm an anarchist, so, you know. Okay, I, in, in the context, I'm sorry, I got lost in that I thought that was something that you were against, so I do apologize, Mike. No. Oh. Brain is toasted. Sorry, man. No, um, a... So, perfect. Glad we were on board on that. So, the biggest question that I find myself just when I'm talking with really any anarchist or anybody who just wants to tear down the state in general, whether they call themselves anarchist, voluntarist, or, you know, Rothbardian, libertarian, or left libertarian, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, is how do we get to that stateless society? Mm -hmm. Now, many of us ANCAP will say, well, we've already got a great step forward with BitNation, which is a new program coming out. Uh, it's going live in, I think, a week or so now, uh, basically, where, you know, all these contract ideas, basically using things that the state controls right now and making them market-driven, uh, you know, that's a step forward towards the stateless society. When we show we don't need the state anymore for mm -hmm. contracts X, Y, Z, uh, then people realize, hey, we're good to go. Uh, is there anything that the communists recommend or the ANCOMs, like, what is our stepping stones to get there? Uh, is it working within the state? Is it uh, basically running off into Bufu, Egypt, and uh, setting up a society there? What's How do we get there? What's the plan? Right. So um, there's typically a variety of tactics when it comes to anarchist communism. Um, some people advocate... Um, and there's different kind of organizational strategies. It's actually a pretty detailed process. Um, but so there's different strategies. So there's um, insurrectionism, which is basically the idea that um, through uh, basically organizing of small affinity groups, things like black blocks, um, you know, we basically smash corporate and state property. I'm not a fan of that one myself, but, you know, that's one of them. The one that I subscribe to, I guess, would be anarcho-syndicalism, where you basically form up, uh, anarchist uh, unions to fight for workers' rights to uh, eliminate capitalism in the state. Um, that's one uh, kind of one. That's the one I subscribe to. There's other ideologies within the framework of that that can be accepted or disregarded, such as platformism, uh, synthesis anarchism. Synthesis anarchism is when basically you advocate that different types of anarchist schools come together in the common goal of the creation of an anarchist society. The one that I advocate, I guess, would be platformism, where anarchists get together with a common goal of a specific anarchist society that they want to see and they try to achieve it through that platform organization. Um, so, 
And uh, the tactics are going to be, you know, different. Like, so, for example, some anarchists, all anarchists advocate direct action. So that's basically uh, action taken on the part of an agent to um, emancipate themselves directly. Um, and now the kind of direct action is going to vary. So some people advocate more nonviolent direct action. So doing things like sit-ins, general strikes, uh, blockades, and stuff like that. Um, I guess someone like me would advocate that kind of stuff, but also... Um, things like, you know, fighting state power with, you know, uh, I guess arms and stuff like that. So I, I guess I would say that I would prefer, uh, I guess, a type of violent confrontation on that end um, because I see that as the only sufficient way. Um, and so, you know, and then there's that. So, uh, and, you know, and anar anarchists have been doing things like, you know, organizing community groups. There's this one case in which an anarchist group um, organized basically where people were getting abused by their landlords and so they organized to fight for those people inside the courts and they've actually done some pretty good stuff for people. There's Food Not Bombs, which provides vegan food for homeless people. Um, there's, you know, uh, there were, they're not anarchists to, really, but um, there were the, the organization, the Black Panthers, which did engage in a kind of uh, an, an example of direct action with uh, kind of, you know, um, basically taking um, protection of black civilians uh, from the police into their own hands and, you know, organizing, like, little, um, I guess, you know, breakfast things for uh, black children um, to get food, things like that. So that's kind of the general idea, is direct action, what mo what any ANCOM, I would say, would advocate. Uh, and, then, and then that's going to vary the type of direct action. But direct action is generally what's advocated. So the, the basically what I'm getting from you is any way that you can, as an individual, remove yourself from the state, whether that be you know not paying taxes or paying as little as you can get away with without getting thrown in prison and you know royally fucked, <laughs> for lack of a better term, um, yeah, I mean, you know that I mean, sort of thing, or at least you know interacting with you know your local area, you know trying to enact change in that way, you know again with you know different support groups, uh, setting up charity organizations of sorts, like you said with the Black Panthers, uh, that's essentially the the main uh, action, I would guess. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, so it's basically kind of taking, you know, like I said, direct actions to emancipate yourself from the system and to take it down. So, um, and, you know, and that's going to vary type different types of direct action. Another anarchist tactic that I should speak about is what anarchists call building the new world in the shell of the old. So basically, um, building uh, the structures that we desire to see in the new world, that in the uh, still existing old world, to give people a kind of example of it, and you know, to build kind of autonomous spaces. Um, so that's one uh, example. An example of that would be um, there's this thing right now called shareable economies, where basically. It's this uh, kind of, uh, and if anybody wants to look more on that, there's uh, a video on the, on a podcast called The Floodgates of Anarchy about it where the, the guy who organizes that particular group uh, is interviewed by the guy from Floodgates Flood of Anarchy. It's a pretty good uh, video. I'd recommend it. Basically, he organizes these, like, um, basically kind of e like groups where people organize in a collective fashion and basically uh, operate on a basis of what, call, what anarchists call mutual aid. Um, it's another anarchist principle, and basically people working together on a on a horizontal, non hierarchical basis. So things like that. Um, so you know that, and that's part of it as well. Right. So, you know, one thing that I've I've always found, and it kind of goes to the whole platforming thing you mentioned earlier. You know, we ANCAPs tend to band together, and you know, you ANCOMs tend to band together, and unfortunately, we go you know and butt heads a hell of a lot more than I think we probably should. Um, right. Is there any situations where you found yourself, you know, with some ANCAPs, you know, while you're in some random forums, not necessarily on full principles, obviously, uh, but where there's been some, you know, complete belligerent statist asshole out there who's like, we right. need to state, her, 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 and you're like, um, no, you're wrong, and here's why, and here's some backup with some ANCAPs who I despise intellectually, <laughs> but, you know, the overall goal is there. Has that ever happened to you? I mean, I definitely find myself agreeing with ANCAPs when it comes to things like the war on drugs and when it comes to things like gun rights and stuff like that. And I, I think a lot of their arguments, though, you know, sometimes I find insufficient. Um, I think a lot of their arguments for that kind of stuff are, are, are pretty apt. 
Um, I definitely like the one. It was like this one video by an uh, ANCAP organization that I was watching. It was basically like saying, okay, so you're not going to allow guns, which are less dangerous than cars, but you let people drive around in these cars that basically you can crash into buildings, you know, burn people, you know, mow down, you know, a, a fucking crowd of people with these, like, machines, and you're letting them drive them all over the road, and then you want to ban guns. So I thought that was kind of uh, an interesting uh, stance to take, and I, and I think that's pretty valid. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes I, I definitely find myself agreeing with ANCAPs, um, you know, at some points. Now, is, is there any advice that you would have uh, to some ANCAPs, uh, obviously outside of don't be an asshole ANCAP, uh, <laughs> where, you know, maybe there is some situations where, you know, more actual good conversations can happen. I mean, I know obviously we should not come in guns blazing as far as the, oh, you're just going to set up another state. You can't do your communist shenanigans without a state. How Right, right. You know, obviously, at least as far as uh, what you've described for your personal interpretation of anarcho-communism, which there's 7,000 different versions of that, just like there's 7,000 versions of ANCAPs. Right. Um, you know, what would bring a, a kind ANCAP your way where you'd be willing to chit-chat and hang out kind of like this? Right, yeah. Um, I, I think that... I think that the best thing for ANCAPs to do is, first of all, um, if you're not going to get anywhere in discussions with ANCOMs, if you come out and just, like, you know, start trying to stamp your ethics onto, ANCAP, onto ANCOMs, and what I've seen is, instead of trying to bridge the ethical um, line, so where, you know, trying to, you know, appeal to commonly uh, held morals to try to say, you know, oh, well, you know, tr to try to prove ANCAP points, whatever they may be, Instead of, what I, instead of seeing that, what I see from RG, from ANCAPs, is basically using their an ethics that ANCOMs don't relate to in the slightest, and, you know, trying to use that um, as a way to prove a point. And it doesn't really work. You have to kind of uh, appeal to commonly held ethics um, oh, if, sure. if you want to get anywhere. So that's what I would, uh, that's my main advice. The only other advice that I could really give was, like you said, don't be a dick. That's the thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure, and you know, obviously, the same kind of goes the other way around. Uh, and you know, just watching your your, I still don't want to call it a debate with Robert. Uh, you know, you guys, at least as far as I was paying attention while I was doing laundry at my hotel. Uh, yeah. yeah, there was there was none of the stamping of ethics on anything. It was just here mm -hmm. are bullet points A B C D E F. Right. Yeah. This, this point. This point. And we don't see that ever. And it's it's just kind of depressing, uh, you know. And yeah. it's, you know, oh well, we're gonna move forward now. Is there, you know, any kind of really plan that we could come together with? It? Do you think there is a possibility of, you know, an ANCOM and an ANCAP, you know, maybe actual physical group in an area where mm -hmm. both will come together uh, for a common goal, whether it be war on drugs, whether it be gun rights, if that's a pertinent thing for some people, right. uh, or rape culture or whatever it is. Right, uh, right. You know, what do you think the chances are of, of that kind of thing happening? Uh, do you I'm, see that? Or is it is it a growing possibility? Is it shrinking because the internet assholes? Or what's your take? Um, uh, well, as far as, I guess, the kind of possibility of it, um, the, the community in which NCAPs and NCOMs kind of discuss in, there's been a growing gap because what's been happening is, uh, you know, stuff has been coming out relating to Stefan Molyneux um, and, you know, and people have been, you know, taking offense to that, you know, and people saying, you know, oh, I really don't like Stefan Molyneux, you know, he's this, he's that. And then there's animosity coming from both sides on that. And then, like, the kind of ethical divide is starting to, you know, kind of open up more. Uh, not really in a way that I can describe, but in a way that I would say it's important because, you know, what's ha kind of happening is it's kind of becoming a less of, okay, we agree on this, this, and this, and it's becoming, like I was talking about before, all right, well, you know, I agree with this, and you agree with this, and, you know, fuck off, you know, afterward. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I mean, there's kind of a growing gap, unfortunately, which, you know, kind of stinks. I mean, I, I, I think, you know, I would be wor willing to work with anybody who shares some common goals with me to get those common goals done as long as they were not something crazy like a fascist or something. So, right, yeah. right, because, you know, obviously, you know, the war machine has never helped anybody ever in any situation at all. Right, you know, right. Outside of the, the political and corporate elites that, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. you know, death helps nobody at yeah. all. Yeah, no. No, I definitely agree.
agree with that, you know, no working with fascists or whatever. But, um, you know, but I would definitely, uh, I, I definitely say that, unfortunately, the likelihood of any kind of mutual work between the two, I mean, it's kind of dissipating. And that's kind of, that kind of sucks in some ways, I think. Oh, for sure. Now, you, you mentioned that, you know, there is a, apparently a disparity in overall ethics, and we don't have to dive too deep into it necessarily, but uh, would I'll kind of throw out a couple of statements and we'll see if you agree with them and we'll see if maybe that's part of the divide. Mm -hmm. uh, do you agree that the initiation of the use of force is, you know, no good, it's immoral? I think in most circumstances, yes, but I think that um, in, in one, and in, in like uh, this certain kind of circumstance, it would be okay. So I would think that the initiation of force in a case where somebody's walking across the road, right, and they're saying, you know, or they're listening to really loud music and there's a truck coming and the truck might hit them if you don't push them out of the way, I guess that could be considered an initiation of force and I think I would advocate that in that scenario. Right, that's that's kind of one of those funny gray areas where at least most people who at least have a little bit of sense like me uh, say right. that's not really the initiation of the use of force, that's actually, you know, saving someone's fucking life. <laughs> so, right. you know, unless you afterwards in such a, uh, you know, glee of celebration, you up in the face or you shoot them, okay, then that's when we get into the use of force. But, you know, saving them, I don't think that falls into that. That's uh, When I say the use of force, I mean going and, you know, me slapping you in the face, kicking your dog, raping your wife, uh, you know, stealing a TV from your house or ripping the headphones out of your face. Uh, mm -hmm. That kind of be the initiation of the use of force or, you know, bringing a mm -hmm. police force to you because I hate the plant you grow in your backyard only to find out that it's fucking okra. Like, there's, <laughs> there's a news article just uh, not too long ago uh, where there was a, a helicopter sweep that was going by uh, over an area, and it saw this giant mm -hmm. farm. And this guy was growing okra, but the leaves looked so much like marijuana that the DEA thought it was pot. So right. they went and raided the guy, and they're like, oh, shit, it's okra. We fucked up. So now, of course, there's right. a lawsuit. So, you know, serves those assholes right. right. <laughs> And so, right, right. You know, there's some obvious solutions as far as you know tearing down the state, whether that be you know civil disobedience or uh, you know there's even some and there's some weirdos out there who think that voting in the system of some kind. Oh, so kind of where we left off, uh, you know, obviously civil disobedience and uh, you know going against the state as as much as possible or. You know, even the, the occasional weirdos who think that voting on uh, certain issues in your local community, like if your local city is going to raise taxes by 5% or whatever, you right. register, you vote that shit down ASAP, uh, even though many people think voting still the initiation of the use of force because you're you know, basically create, using the state to hold the gun against the other people right. uh, you know, for whatever. Do you find any, any uh, use for voting or using the political system to change it? Or is that something that we just need to largely abandon and basically strike out on our own? Generally, I would say that utilizing the political system is not a good idea, even on a local level. Like some people say, "Oh, I want to." Well, I'm gonna, you know, like I have a friend who's gonna be getting into, you know, I guess a party, I guess, and I, I don't generally advocate that because uh, political power is, in that sense, is generally pretty destructive. I don't really see a solution in that. But I, I guess maybe in the situation that you described, so like say, for instance, there are, you know, uh, so for, so sometimes, you know, it can be useful. So for an instance, in voting on, you know, letting gay people get married in certain instances, you know, in one state, maybe there's a vote for that. Um, you know, that, 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 that actually does tend to work, you know, at, at least sometimes. So, you know, I would advocate doing that in some instances because, I mean, at some level they do let voting change something if it's on a very small local level uh, to keep the populace at ease. So I, I would definitely advocate it in that situation. Um, but in most situations I'd say political power should be stayed away from. Well, absolutely, and that's, that's one of the many things, uh, you know, many parts of things we can definitely agree on. And that's, that's kind of exciting. Uh, having a, another partner in, in crime of sorts. Um, now, I, I kind of want to leave this last little segment just completely up to your rantings and ravings and however you want to roll with things. I'll just open up the floor. Is there any uh, major sources people need to check out? Any big videos coming up? Uh, any good books that you should recommend or any websites? Just 
lay the whole groundwork out there for people because, you know, as much as I love throwing out my ANCAP stuff, Mises Institute and so on, right. you know, right. I want people to have the opportunity that if they're going to disagree with you on, on your stances, to learn your damn stances and, right. and learn the logic behind it. Uh, that way we're not complete blithering assholes when we're, when we're out there talking with you guys about this stuff from your perspective. Throw it all out there. You have eight minutes. Go. Right. Okay. Well, I guess the best place to go to learn, I guess, ANCOM stuff and, you know, just people on that side of the fence in general is, is um, you know, I mean, there's there's definitely a lot of uh, anarchist writers out there, um, such as, you know, uh, people like uh, Murray Bookchin, uh, Peter Kropotkin, Mikhail Bakunin, uh, Alexander Berkman, Emma Goldman, stuff like that, you know, people like that. You should definitely check out those kind of stuff. Uh, you know, um, definitely check out uh, people like you know the Left Libertarian and Narco Pack on YouTube. Um, they they have pretty good videos for explaining this kind of stuff. Um, you know, Libertarian Socialist Rants as well on YouTube. Also on YouTube, uh, Shane Hunter. He's an uh, an anarchist communist on YouTube. Um, you know, and uh, there's also I guess for you know uh, I guess my I would also recommend um, Capitalism 101. On YouTube, he makes some pretty good videos. Um, you know, uh, I guess critiques of capitalism, um, and you know, laying out kind of things like the labor theory of value and all of that, um, so people can understand that better. And um, so, I would definitely recommend checking out all of those. Um, David Harvey, he's a, and Richard Wolf, those are also pretty good people to check out. Um, and I, I think that's pretty much it for me. So you know. Well, I mean, we're, we're doing you a great disservice, sir. You've got a, a fairly nice channel yourself. I had a chance to sift through a couple of your videos last night, well, in between uh, taking phone calls at the hotel, and you're very, well, obviously you're very well-spoken. I mean, you, you kicked ass with Robert. Uh, right. But I found myself, even if I wasn't agreeing with you, I, I thought very positively of your videos. Uh, so we're... You know, plug some of your favorites. What are your your best viewed ones? What are the ones that have the oh, the most positive community behind it? I, I'm so bad at like promoting my own shit. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I guess my best video. I mean, I, I guess just I don't really have one as a particular favorite of mine or anything like that. I guess you know, just my channel's Red and Black Revolutionary. If you want to give that a, a check out, I, I, I kind of. I delve into topics relating to capitalism and, you know, this day. Basically, like, you know, advocating my position as a, an anarchist communist. So, uh, you know, that's, I guess, my thing. I would also definitely tell people to check out uh, an organization that I'm part of, Workers Youth United. Um, so they should check out that as well because, you know, there's some good stuff on there. Um, and, you know, I, don't, I guess that's my shit as, a, <laughs> as opposed to that. And you mentioned adminning multiple things. Now, is that through Facebook, or is that mostly forum stuff? That's um, that's mostly Facebook. Um, okay. So, like, I have... There's uh, one page that I have called uh, Anarchist United. Um, I admin that with a few people. Um, there's also... What else is there? God, I can't even remember right now. I hope blocking. you're part of one of those random... Like, there's 7,000 different anarchy balls or nihilism ball. Like, yeah, 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 Those yeah. are fucking hilarious, man. I love those. <laughs> if you're part of one of those, we need to push that ASAP. <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not part of one of those, unfortunately. Damn it. Yeah, those are good. Those are good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, there's just... There's, you know, there's a bunch of shit I'm blanking right now, but, you know, so... Oh, for sure. Well, and we'll we'll touch base, and we'll make sure to get all the links organized. I'm going to put them all in the description bar below, uh, right. uh, to be you know actually above all the ones that I usually post for my my videos. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's just really important, I think, guys, to to give these guys a fair look. Uh, obviously, as ANCAPs, we will have some very very fundamental differences. That's just the way the uh, and the nature of the beast when it comes to two different ideologies. But the core is the same. Anarchy. We want the statelessness, and we need to not forget that. You know, when we see the anarcho in front of our names, that should be uniting a kind of a brotherhood of sorts. It's not communist anarchy. It's not capitalist anarchy. It's anarcho-capitalism or anarcho-communism. Uh, statelessness comes first. What happens after? Who the fuck cares at this point? I mean, once we get there, then we'll sort it out. Then we'll have our fiery debates. Then we'll see who will win out. We'll see who will have the better system, and we'll see 
you know, maybe capitalism won't work. Maybe communism won't work. Maybe fascism might work. Who fucking knows? I mean, once we get to that stateless system, you know, it's, it's all a toss-up. We don't know what the future holds. We have some good ideas. We have some good guesses. But let's get to that goal first. Uh, that's the big important thing. And how we get there, frankly, doesn't matter, in my opinion, as long as we get there. Is that something you would you would generally agree with? I mean, I, I do think that there needs to be discussion about what's going to happen. So, like, I wouldn't advocate that people abstain from all discussion and say, oh, we get there where we get there. Oh, right, but right. I definitely think that, you know, we can't get all the details down, and I think that, you know, there's going to have to be left. There's going to have to be room for experimentation. So, to, to a certain degree, yes, to a certain degree, no. Right, right, definitely. Well, uh, you know, Jake, I really, really appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun, uh, you know, and and it's been kind of a chilling moment for me. I've I've enjoyed this. It's uh, kind of on a new spiritual level for me, in in a manner of speaking, uh, right. to be able to talk with somebody who's willing to chit chat from the ancom perspective and not right. yell, "You you capitalist pig dog, you err." Right. Right. Uh, so it's you know it's been fantastic talking to you. I hope to have you on the show more often. Uh, you know. Maybe we'll throw out some debates. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll just let you talk for 30 minutes. I don't know. I just like right. to feature as many people as I can. Right. You know, if you ever want me to have people throw tomatoes out on screen for your shows, let me know. I have plenty of mass to go around for that. Uh, so we can right. we can work out some fun shenanigans on your end if that's something you're interested in. Completely your choice. Uh, this will be Adam Brott of Liberation Honest Republic High with the great Jake Tompkins. Uh, <laughs> from Red and Black Revolutionaries. That's right, Red and Black Revolutionary? That's my channel, yeah. Very good. Uh, we will be signing off saying peace and love in anarchism, and we will reach that stateless society one day. Let's get there, guys. Peace. Peace.